Do you remember the study that came out of MIT that talked about AI taking away people's brain power? It, was, it made a lot of waves. Basically, the TLDR is that when it, you copy and paste decisions out of Chad GPT or thinking or writing out of Chad GPT, it turns out not much of your brain gets used. Big surprise. There is a larger lesson learned here. In a lot of high profile cases, and I'm noticing especially in finance, people want AI to take the burden of the outcome off their shoulders. They want to give it to AI and ask AI to make the decision for them so they can take credit for being smart and using AI when it goes well, stock goes up, or so they can blame the AI when the stock goes down. I have watched people mess around with chat GPT and they're not asking strong prompts. They're not asking analytical prompts. We'll get into how you do this better. They are just saying, give me answers. Should I refi at 6.2%? Is now a good time to refinance my mortgage? When do I sell my house? Or how much money do I need to buy a house? If I want to move to this city, how much money do I need? I want to negotiate with my employer for a raise. How much should I ask for? These are answer questions. They're what I call domain completion questions. Google is actually very good for this. This is what Google was designed for. Google was designed to work with your brain's propensity to ask for answers. It is the answer machine. And one of the things that we are all living through right now is a transition from answer machine, a la Google, to thinking machine, a la chat GPT, Claude, Gemini, et cetera. We need to make sure that we prioritize moving to thinking machines for high leverage, high value activities. Finance sure comes to mind. It seems pretty valuable. Because when you ask for answers from an LLM, the LLM is trained to be helpful and gives you a perfectly acceptable generic answer because your prompt did not give it the room to do what it does best. Your prompt did not give it the room to analyze, to actually dig deep. And so what I want to focus on in this video are the principles. I'm going to use finance as a lens because I think it's a high leverage high value activity. We all do it one way or another, whether we're in a budgeting app or whether we're investing or whether we're negotiating compensation, we have to do with money. I want to talk about how you use LLMs for this because it's a lens into how we use them for high value thinking activities. And the frame I want to propose is that it is most effective if instead of using domain completion or give me the answer type questions, we change and we think of it as give me an analysis given all of these inputs that I'm going to give you. And we very carefully structure the prompt so that you can actually have a correct place for all the analysis that the LLM will need to complete in order to give you a reasonable overall picture of the decision you're contemplating. So the goal is that the LLM is a synthesizer. The LLM is a conversational partner where it can process inputs more efficiently than you. It can look at a discounted cash flow sheet maybe more efficiently than you, unless you're Warren Buffett. If Warren's listening from beyond the grave, hello, Warren. But the point here is that most of us don't use it that way. I want to suggest that this is because we are very uncomfortable with uncertainty and using LLMs this way extends the uncertainty runway to a degree that is difficult for most of us to handle. If you use the LLM to analyze your refinancing position, you don't get a decision back. All you get back is a set of options with a lot more color, a set of options with a lot more clarity around the details. You have given the LLM a lot of information, maybe your W-2s, your 1099 income, whatever you have, right? Your current rate on the house, what you want to do, et cetera. And you're going to get a lot of options back. And the LLM may have an opinion, and that may be okay, and you may or may not agree, but it doesn't give you an answer because you didn't prompt it to be an answer completion machine. And so you have to sit with the uncertainty and the responsibility of the decision. This is the part where the lens zooms back into the wider world. We need to get a lot more comfortable with uncertainty and LLMs. LLMs are wonderful analysis tools. We need to take that analysis, own the decision, and own the consequences of that decision. That is going to give us much, much better results. It enables us to harness the incredible power for processing tokens that LLMs put at our fingertips and not reduce all of that power down to just one decision. You actually want all of that power on exploring optionality. And the prompts that I've developed for finance as a way of exploring this do just that. 
and you can get them on the Substack, and you can run them yourself and you can see. They're designed to unlock analysis for various specific financial scenarios. But I didn't stop there. I thought it really has more bite to it if I actually run a live experiment. And so I am running a live experiment using a small amount of real money on Robinhood and on Kalshi, the events market. In both cases, I'm asking three separate LLMs to formulate opinions, analyses, establish bets on specific trades that they want to execute. We will then run those trades and we will tell the LLMs that we will judge the results in 90 days. 90 days feels very short from a investing perspective, from a call sheet perspective, but it's also something that we can sort of get directional on and giving them the horizon gives the LLMs a chance to plan for short term. We will see how we do. I've selected uh, O3 Pro for this, Opus 4 for this, and Grok 4. I'm going to write it all up. I'm going to have a copy of what they predict. We're going to track it. We're going to see how they do. The point here is not, by the way, pick the model that makes the stock go up. I know cases where companies are AI washing their financing and basically saying in AI and the stock will go up. Brr. It doesn't work that way. Stocks are not money printing machines in the hands of AI. Instead, they can process a lot of text, they can provide useful context, they can provide useful analysis to humans that make decisions. And so my question is actually, do we have, given a strong prompt, good data from a real life test that helps us to understand how LLMs interact with data streams and make recommendations against real life markets with real life consequences. And we're going to find out And at the end of the time, like I fully expect that some of these will not work. Some of them will work. We are going to see if any of them actually end up coming out ahead of the ledger. And we are going to see whether there are substantial differences, meaningful differences between these models. And I may well run actual statistical analysis on the ending balance differences to see if they are within a normal distribution range from each other or whether they are actually substantially outside the confidence interval. I used to do a little bit of statistical analysis and that would be quite fun for me. That's the point, right? The point is not Nate is going to then pick the, the, the LLM that makes all the stocks go up and everyone's going to be happy. LLMs are not financial advisors. I'm not a financial advisor. I am here to help you reframe how you think about LLMs and get you into an analysis space. When you look at the prompts, I want you to think about the prompts as tools for analysis. How do you take a tool that starts with, here are the relevant inputs, here is your role, here is the silent reflection I want you to do, hidden chain of thought so that you can understand what the task is, whether you have all the inputs, etc. Here is the output I want, here is the success criteria, here is your fallback or rejection criteria. All of these things, put them together into a structured prompt around a particular decision, around whether or not you should sell your stock if you become one of those employees that get a stock event, right? Like it's a specific decision event, you can craft a prompt for it. Buy a house, you can craft a prompt for it. Start a new job, you can craft a prompt for it. And so part of my goal here is to basically lay out enough of these examples that you can start to take them and make them your own. You can start to take them and say, where do I need more analysis? And maybe it's not finances. Maybe it's picking a college. Maybe it's picking an MBA program. I sometimes have people weigh in and they're like, Nate, tell me the best AI program to take. And I'm like, it's hard for me to tell. Like, this is actually a great example where you should use a well-structured prompt. It's a high value decision. It should not tell you what to do. It should give you the tools to overcome decision anxiety if you can sit with the discomfort of working through an analysis. And so what we're really asking for is not investment advice. It's really, can you keep responsibility for the outcome inside you and ask the LLM to give you strong analysis for whatever the decision is? In particular, LLMs are very strong at analyzing wide ranges of textual input, and they're very strong at developing alternatives and working through alternatives. So you can get a wider picture than you would get from most humans because it will read more and it will look at more options if you frame your prompt correctly. And so one of the things that I think is sometimes helpful in these situations is you don't just write one prompt, like you write the prompt and then you tweak some of the inputs. What if this scenario changes? What if that scenario changes? That is literally one prompt away and it used to be nearly impossible to get. It used to be that if you sat down with a financial advisor, with a real estate person, with a career guidance person, you would spend the entire hour and whatever money you were going to spend working through just one scenario 
scenario at a core of granularity than you can do with one chat in an LLM. And now you can have 10 chats. Do you want to model a scenario where you put 25% down on the house, 15% down on the house? Do you want to model a scenario where you take the job as a marketing manager at X salary or Y salary and what that does to your budget? You can do all of that in a chat if you're willing to live with LLMs as analyzers. They free you up. This relates to what I've talked about with LLMs as digital twins. It's the same concept. You are using LLMs to cheaply model future timelines. And when you can do that efficiently, it helps you greatly improve the quality of decision making. And I've chosen finances to illustrate it because people find finances very tangible and it helps make it more real. And so I've got the prompts out there. You can look at them if you want. If you just want to take this away, though, I want to again challenge you to use a structured thinking framework in how you interact with AI. Do not do domain completion questions like Google. It is one of the biggest super tips I have for people with prompt questions. Don't prompt chat GPT like you prompt Google. It will not work well. You will not get optimal results. Instead, use the power of the AI by asking it to actually think. That means you have to retain and put on your thinking cap. You have to own the outcome and you have to challenge it with a structured thinking framework. And that's what my prompts are designed to do is basically lay out how you do structured thinking frameworks so that you can make the most of the power that AI requires. Yes, this is harder. You have to gather actual data. You have to sit down with prompt craft, which I can help with, but like everyone's prompt is going to be slightly different. And the analysis approach front loads the uncertainty. You have to deal with the uncertainty up front. That's okay. You can get into that pattern now. You can get into it with finance. You can get into it with whatever frame you can with a big decision, and then it becomes second nature and you will use AI more and more that way. And that unlocks a ton of downstream benefit for you. If you are the person in your life using LLMs like this, you are going to progress faster because you can literally see more future timelines. It is like a hidden superpower that is one chat away. The goal is not to avoid AI for financial decisions. I don't want you to hear this and say, well, Nate's going to run a test on Grok 4 and Opus 4 and, and on ChatGPT, and we'll see. And if it goes well, then we'll use it for financial decisions. And if they lose money, then we won't. The beauty of this is that we learn something either way. The point wasn't the decisions. The point was the analysis and the relationship between the prompt and the results. The point is to use the LLM as a thinking partner. So that's my challenge for you. The choice is ironically very much yours. Can you use AI as a thinking partner rather than just using it for domain completion? Think about it. Cheers.